Climate change is a hot topic right now. 2018 saw the release of numerous scientific papers outlining just how bad the situation is and detailing how it is going to get worse. These reports show how we've fallen very short of our two degree target and how we're already on an accelerated path towards even more significant heat levels over the next 30 years. This is happening in your lifetime. The reports indicate a decline in global crop production, ocean stocks, increased likelihood of pandemics and disease-bearing insects, floods and coastal erosion. The picture is bleak. If you are among the few who are not convinced that climate change is real, take a look at this section of coastline that I frequently visit at the back of my property. Satellite imagery from Google Earth shows that from 2002 to 2012, very little about the coastline changed. Keep your eye on this particular section. As I flip through the years, From 2013 to 2016, however, a large portion of the coastline is being reshaped by rising sea levels and the high course tides brought about by the lunar cycles. These high course tides were happening monthly from 2002 to 2012, but only in recent years did these tides begin spilling over the natural shore wall of stones pushed into place by the ocean. Take a look at the change again. This is the same shoreline. As you can see, the waves are going right over the brim of stone that protects the land, washing over it and into the ecosystem beyond. This is what a rising sea level looks like. The oceanside cliffs are collapsing as the tides wash higher and higher, taking away the soil. Fifty to sixty year old trees, once firmly rooted in the earth, have had their soil washed out from under them, leaving their roots dangling in salt water. Entire forests of Bay of Fundy kelp have been washing up on shore, weakened by unstable ocean temperatures and ripped from their moorings by increasingly powerful storm surge. This is the shape of the natural rock bowl the ocean used to be confined to. But I would be underwater right now in a high course tide. Once limited to the spring and occasionally the fall, Lyme disease bearing black-legged ticks like this one are now seen year-round. Our dog and occasionally our clothes collect these vermin throughout fall into December, January, and even February. The only time they seem to disappear is in the hottest summer months. Winters here are not what they used to be. Even since I was a kid, and grandparents still tell stories of winters nearly unimaginable to us now. These ticks are a dangerous indicator of the rising temperatures and a threat that our governments still have not found a reasonable solution to. The 
Lyme disease is an outdoorsman's worst fear. Storms are getting worse, and sustained winds are becoming stronger and stronger. The warming weather has even had an impact on migratory birds, like this murmuring of starlings. This was filmed on the first day of December, long after the typical migration has taken place. They search in futility for fall insects in the winter grass. Large populations of Canada geese don't even migrate anymore, choosing instead to hunker down in large coastal fields and take their chances with the warmer winter weather. Most people go about their day without giving thought to the changing world around them. Taking for granted things like breathing clean air and having enough food. And while the sun is setting on our hopes to prevent climate change, there is still a chance we can slow its pace and stave off the worst effects. More on that soon. When coupled with rising oceans, we're seeing storm surge like this even outside of hurricanes. This surge took place after a brief wind event that was not a hurricane or a tropical storm. But you might not know that if you could see the size and power of these waves in person. The large stone breakwater at the local wharf stands about 20 feet tall on average, and the waves were breaking over the top of it. If so much change is evident in only the past few years alone, what will the next decade look like? How much shoreline will remain?
what will survive the endless tides? Will anyone remember what it used to be like? Will everything we know be swept away by an angry ocean? Though it may seem like dark times are coming, humanity still has the ability to prevent a complete cataclysm. The best thing we can do as a population is keep pressure on our governments, and only elect governments who have the interests of the planet at heart. As individuals, there are many small things we can do to chip away at our own impacts on the world. Though most of it involves energy efficiency and reuse. The real difference comes at a much higher level. The policy makers and their need for greed. Perhaps we need a new generation of hippies. Maybe the world needs a psychedelic renaissance to see the error of our ways and right the path. Earth, our planet, Gaia, whatever you want to call it, is the only vehicle humanity has to carry us through the cosmos and into the future. Thanks for watching.